and welcome to Woodshed Reviews, where we look at films old and new, good and bad. And on today's show, we're going to look at the new TV series, Terminator Zero. And the film that started it all 40 years ago, uh, which has been re-released in cinemas for its 40th anniversary, The Terminator. So we're feeling old? Yeah. Um, so you saw it at the cinema the first time? <laughs> I wasn't quite wasn't quite old enough for that, but uh, yeah, uh, we went to see it that um, this past week, and also as we said, Terminator Zero dropped on Netflix. The end of the world comes tomorrow. Yeah, a bit of a surprise. I wasn't expecting a, another entry to the Terminator franchise so soon. Yeah, um, but a slightly different take on this one. Uh, obviously, it's a Japanese anime. Eight episodes, so total in about four hours. It came out on August the 29th. All right, okay, I didn't twig that. <laughs> I haven't done my research. <laughs> As we all know, August 29th is Michael Jackson's birthday. <laughs> cue, that, cue that alternative ending from Terminator 2. August 29th, 1997, came and went. Nothing much happened. Michael Jackson turned 40. I was quite intrigued by this because I wasn't that impressed by the last two Terminator films. The last three. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? So uh, here's another attempt mm -hmm. to revitalise the franchise. I take it this was a sequel to one and two and ignoring the kind of the rest of them. Yeah, that's what I kind of felt like it was going to be. But I think at the same time, it was a bit of damage control because it kind of accepted the sequels. Like, because there's it's saying that all these other timelines yeah. could have taken place. Because this one, I, I thought it did a quite good explanation about time travel. Mm -hmm. Every time a Terminator is sent back, it's a short time window for somebody who can follow that Terminator. Mm -hmm. And then when they go back, it creates a new past. Yeah. So the future where they were sent from stays the same. Yeah. I thought that was quite interesting. The way that the Terminators have been doing this, Skynet's been approaching this, is largely kind of redundant because there's always going to be a resistant fighter, there's always going to be someone who's going to lead the, the charge. You know, it's like sort of like the argument, like, would you shoot Hitler if you could go back in time? But then the reality is that the the situation that led up to that is probably to some degree still going to going to happen. So it's a similar sort of um, I idea with that. For a change, we get a show that's set in Tokyo. Yeah. It's right away. It's very fresh. Uh -huh. And uh, I watched it with the subtitles and. All right, hardcore. Yeah. Did you do the uh, English dub or? It just came up with English for me um, in the first viewing, but I'm kind of all right with that when it's an animation because. It's literally dubbed anyway, whichever language you kind of you're watching it in. So I don't kind of fret too much about that. But yeah, did that bring anything to it? Do you think? No, I kind of alternated between the two. Okay. Um, I watched a couple of episodes and uh, twice, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, it's great in both. You can't see it yet, but you've been on a collision course your entire life. Yeah, so this one centres around the Lee family, mm -hmm. primarily Malcolm Lee. Yeah, is he our main character, would you say? I would say so, yeah. I think it was maybe needed a, a focus of our main character because it felt like it was maybe a little too much, too much kids for a start, for my liking. Yeah, he's got three kids. Yeah, he uh, could have just had two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a nanny as well who's quite young. She's not, she's not a kid, but she's quite like a, an adolescent or yeah. a teen or something like that, you know, so. So he works at Cortex Industries and then he's d developing an AI mm -hmm. and he seems to be aware of this. In fact, it is August 29th and Malcolm C seems to be very familiar with the August lore. 29th. Yeah. Um, so that's quite mysterious. So how does he know all this? Yeah. And he's working on this AI system mm -hmm. and he's fretting about putting it online yeah. uh, to see if that can stop Skynet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was kind of interesting. I liked the change in location because obviously it's always been in sort of uh, you know America. I like that they stuck to the classic lore. I think one of the things probably most of us don't like about the later films is changing all that stuff, changing Judgment Day, changing what Skynet was. You know, I think when one of the films it's like an app-based system or something like that rather than this nuclear holocaust. And I like that it was setting it in the 
time period of this stuff rather than whenever the films are kind of made, that's when they're kind of set. Yeah, for you know. sure. So it's quite cool to be back in 1997. Yeah. A lot of chilling stuff in it. Because mm -hmm. you've got this impending nuclear war. <laughs> and there's a few callbacks. Um, he has a dream. Uh, very similar to uh, Sarah Connor's yeah. Nuclear Nightmare from mm -hmm. T2. Yeah. So it kind of really hits home the kind of frightful prospect of a nuclear war. Yeah, it kind of gets that sort of aspect of it right that's been missing, I suppose, because it's, it kept them feeling like Judgment Day was always kind of being postponed, changed about, all that kind of stuff. The lore was being un, unnecessarily messed about with. And this one kind of got it a little bit back, back to how, I suppose, fans would like it to be, you know, and to be able to do that. I think part of the problem with the, the sequel films is having Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, mm -hmm. and you have to explain his old face, you know, um, and that's kind of part of the problem but at the same time you kind of want to have him in it so it's a kind of exactly. double-edged sword you know? I know I know he's uh, so tied to the series there is references and callbacks to the films there's a lot I thought more than I would have liked I think but having just come out of Alien Romulus a couple of weeks ago it's it's pretty it's pretty sparse compared to that get away from her you Yeah, it doesn't interfere with the story really. No. But I like the little touches, stuff like the it's a Aiko, our kind of hero, mm. the protector. She's a soldier sent back. Um, yeah. She's basically the Kyle Reese of, of the story, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of things she does, like she puts a hood up like Kyle Reese yeah, yeah. and uh, making the homemade bombs as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's things like that I don't mind. It um, mm. works for the story. Yeah, it was a couple of times and I kind of went, mm, I could have been done without that. But it didn't. I wasn't getting annoyed. There's a Terminator who's sent back, who's our main Terminator bad guy. He's a T-101 sort of model. And he dons a sort of police helmet and motorbike of the T-1000. He could have done something different there, you know. Yeah. Um, and for a, a show that seems to be kind of trying to do its own thing, it was a bit of a, a bit of a pity that it kind of fell into that sort of trap. But again, compared to a lot of films that we're used to and that they dig out, dig up uh, old franchises and stuff it was sure. fairly tame yeah and i'm more likely to let you know let it go for this one because i thought the substance was very strong i loved the scenes where malcolm lee um he's locked himself in this dome and he um brings the uh, ai online yeah. and he's having these debates about humanity like yeah. was well, is humanity good for the world and so the idea is as he uh, as he sort of said is to counteract the Skynet AI with his own AI that he's going to try and train or convince to help to help out. Uh, that would be the idea of it, yeah. But the AI is asking the important questions. Mm. It might actually side with Skynet. <laughs> yeah. you know? Why should I side with you? You know, yeah. um, Which is the danger of kind of uh, allowing it to have that sort of free will, I suppose. You yeah. Know? Far more interesting ideas and uh, themes and concepts going on than, like I said, in the last few films. Oh, uh, definitely. Although it was a little bit of a rehash of time traveling and going back and being chased and all that kind of stuff, that was in there as well. It's kind of the nuts and bolts of a Terminator film and a, or a Terminator show. You do kind of uh, need that. It's just it's good if you can do something a little bit different with it. And I think, you know, it kind of it mostly succeeded. Yeah. That. I felt it was maybe... Could it have been a little tighter, um, possibly, just a little bit? I think maybe there was some of the chase sequences got a little repetitive, maybe. These three kids, four kids were outsmarting this Terminator a little too much, taking a little bit of the yeah. the edge away from it. I know like later on it has to kind of keep one of the kids alive, and that's quite a nice a nice touch in the, how they explain that. But I could have been done with one of the kids kind of maybe, you know, being sacrificed or something. <laughs> it would have given it a little bit of, you know, grit, because it's not shy from showing a bit of violence and gore. Yeah, and the kids were in a lot of jeopardy. Yeah. And the father had, you know, I don't want to spoil this one too much, but there's 
quite high stakes and um, yeah and you're not quite sure which way it's going to go yeah i definitely i liked uh, the reveal of his story and stuff like that because i wondered what it was going to be and i was kind of worried will we get a satisfying kind of explanation for malcolm's backstory and you know, I think we did. Yeah, um, yeah, I like that. Pleasantly surprised by it. And, you know, Japanese anime is not exactly my forte. So I don't know to compare it to a huge amount of stuff that's out there. But um, I can only sort of compare it within the Terminator landscape, I guess. As we're sort of saying, um, better than the last three films for my liking anyway. Yeah, this is the most excited I've been about a Terminator uh, show probably since T2. And obviously there's a Sarah Connor Chronicles, was it? Yeah, I enjoyed that show. Unfortunately, that one got cancelled yeah. before any resolution. But yeah, I like I like this one. It kind of made all the films kind of acceptable in their own way. That's true. I never thought of that because, yeah, I'd, I'm not... I'm nev- even if films are bad, I'm never that keen on them being retconned out of a franchise. Because yeah. I felt like Dark Fate was scrubbing out the previous yeah. three films or so. It's supposed to be a sequel to one and two and ignore three, four, five, which is not a bad idea, but I'm always a bit like, those films do exist, and, you know, uh, three's all right, you know. But now Terminator Zero, I'm like, yeah, I can maybe forget about Dark Fate a bit more. <laughs> a little bit more, yeah. Well, I'd be more likely to watch Terminator Zero, I think, than I would be to watch Genesis or, or Dark Fate. Um, so. Yeah, I'm going to say a uh, solid three and a half. Maybe, for me, a tiny little bit drawn out. The kid characters were a bit much for me in places, and some of the callbacks could have been done without but very strong themes good characters all round and some nice action and stuff so uh, I was yeah pleasantly surprised I loved it um, I thought it was very tense at moments and quite intellectual the debates between Malcolm and the AI that was probably some of the best bits yeah yeah I really really loved these scenes and they made it for me some harrowing scenes yeah. Um, so yeah I'm thinking I'm just going to go a bit higher and give it a four. So on that note, I guess we, um, we've been spoiled as Terminator fans this past month or so. Yeah, so They're... we both saw the original at the cinema, which was always a kind of dream for me. But this has been tweaked. It's been cleaned up. What did you think about it? Well, I mean, the, unless something's really bad like that, it's not something that kind of like bothers me too much. I could see some things about it, but it wasn't kind of distracting or anything for, for me in terms of that. I haven't seen the Terminator 2. I know there's a Terminator 2 4K, you know, rubber stamp by James Cameron that people are really kind of angry about. I haven't seen it. I've not bothered um, because I'm quite happy with my Blu-ray at yeah. the moment. So. But you're a bit more familiar with that aspect. So uh, Just because I watched the 4K of T2, I was a bit worried about this one. Mm. I have to say this one plays a lot better. Um, yeah. It does look a lot more polished. Yeah, the grain, uh, the grain was uh, was missing from. It. Yeah, which I don't understand. It's a film from the eighties, shot in film. It should still look like a film that was made in the eighties. So I'm not sure what I think about it cleaning it up so much. Yeah, and I think that affects um, the faces, especially like Sarah Connor. She looked a bit too smooth skinned. I think there's some texture lost. Yeah, that's part of the problem with cleaning up the whole image too much you're going to lose a little mm-hmm. you maybe gain something but you lose something as well yeah yes yeah, so that stuck out she looked like a mannequin in a few okay. scenes i never know i never noticed that but i mean probably it's the sort of thing like if you point it out to me then i'll start to sort of notice it i think it still looked amazing yeah it's that sort of thing i mean i could watch a copy of terminator on vhs on a four by three tv and once i'm kind of into it i'm into it you know what i mean it's like because the story, because it hadn't, it hadn't been that long ago since I'd watched it and it was going along and it was that kind of thing of like, I watched this a few months ago, I'm really in the mood to watch it so soon again and then once it starts and it gets going, and what I loved about it, it's just uh, so lean and fat free, like it takes so long until like there's any dialogue explaining about what's happening, but you know what's happening. It's, I mean, there is a sort of opening sort of uh, blurb, I guess, so, but you know, it doesn't go over the score with that kind of stuff and you're watching the first sort of 40 minutes and it's just pure you know introducing the characters the set up the action and all that yeah. kind of stuff and you know what's happening and it, i loved all that so if it's a film that i'm not enjoying i'll maybe start to nitpick some of the sort of transfer and stuff like that but if it's something that i'm just kind of like absorbed in i kind of tend to kind of wash that out i suppose yeah it's my favorite terminator film and mm-hmm. yeah you can't help but get caught up in it yeah yeah, it's a perfect film. Yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Um, I would say maybe um, the f- the final shot. 
I don't know, it, it doesn't look great, the sort of matte painting. I just, I don't remember it being... So uh, obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just seeing it on a massive screen. I think that's part of it. Yeah. I'm hoping um, the issues I had with it will look better on a smaller screen. Maybe. But the, our, our screens in our homes nowadays are pretty big. Ones, yeah. Because so. I love matte paintings um, in films and sometimes you don't even know that they're there. They're so good, you know. Yeah. And I kind of probably always knew that that was one, but I, just this time it just kind of took me a little bit of it. That might be part of uh, the, the clean-up process, as you're sort of saying. Well, if the grain was still there, it would kind of maybe blend a little better. That's maybe what it is. Yeah. yeah. Terminator, to me, is a, always meant to be like a dark, grungy film. No, it was low budget. It was filmed that way. And it's a great contrast from like Terminator 2, which was a big, polished, super-budget, kind of high-production kind of thing. It was kind of like the yin and yang of that and always loved that kind of switch up you know between the two films and almost like a and the sort of change the genre a little bit from horror to action and i always think that's a good way to kind of like if you're telling especially when you're telling pretty much the same story yeah it's a good way to kind of switch up so that was a nice kind of contrast so you want to keep terminator looking like terminator rather than terminator 2 i guess maybe next time i watch it i'll maybe notice some of the things you're saying skin is, skin is definitely an aspect that you can kind of close-ups of faces and stuff is definitely a place where yeah. you notice these things and because uh kyle reese has got stubble and he's quite grimy you don't notice it so much with him right but with uh sarah connor her face is not meant to be that smooth right. surely well, i'm assuming that cameron's been supervising this sort of 4k thing is he because well did he not supervise the t2 possibly he's learned or listen to some criticism but maybe yeah probably not <laughs> <laughs> probably not but um but yeah i mean that's the kind of film aficionado kind of thing but i don't think most people pay yeah, attention to yeah. it and i'm kind of in the middle with that kind of stuff i suppose i'm kind of interested in it but i don't get too kind of i don't tend to get too bogged bogged down in it yeah but it was uh, great to see holds up and like i say even just haven't watched it a couple of months ago because we should say that we watched all the terminator films a couple of months ago and ranked them My, this was a this was a difficult one for me uh, it was difficult for me too so uh which will it be with a, with a heavy heart, I'm going to put at number two. Do we really need to tell you what our rating for The Terminator is? Here's our rating. It's pretty obvious. Um, so, yeah. Okay, that's our show on The Terminator and Terminator Zero. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought, and we'll see you next time. Take care. I'll be back.